through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 255. No, 254, sorry, Chad. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 254. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for May 14th. Mm -hmm. Two weeks into May. We always like to count them. Count May them out. Is, uh, two weeks into May is not a great DVD release. This no. Is... <laughs> the theater is definitely this trumping is... the home rental market yeah, this week. Yeah, this is the DVD rundown scraping the bottom of the barrel. Yes. Yeah, pretty it's, much. It's a, it's a little rough, but you know. We'll get you, you through it. We'll get you through it. We're like lube. We'll get you through it. No matter how rough. We're going to start by one of the more controversial mm, releases mm -hmm. of last year. Some people loved it, some people hated it, and that is Cloud Atlas. Yes. Complex uh, story based on a novel by David, David Mitchell. Mitchell. Yep. And um, Tom Tyker, Tyker, however you Tyker. say that. Tyker. Yeah. And then uh, what, 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 the Wajikowskis. The Wajikowskis, yeah, yeah. yeah, directed it. Um, well, all three of them directed it. Yes. Yeah. Different segments, though. Yeah, it's They're... one of the few films in history that's three directors working together as an original team who equally share directing credits. Yeah, I think there were six segments. The Wojciechowski's yep. did three. and Shot Tickler in two did... parallel filming units, one under the helm of Ticker and one under the Wojciechowski siblings, sharing so... no crew members besides the cast and the directors. Which is, I mean, for those who haven't seen it, it's about six different periods in, in history. Time, yeah, and all these characters that are intertwined in fate and things like that. I mean, more or less characters. Yeah. I mean, they're like... Actors yes, playing characters exactly, that are intertwined. Characters, yes. uh, Some given yellow face, which is... We're, we're not, we're, yeah, we're not going to get into all <laughs> whitewashing, whatever yes, yes. storyline you want to get into, but it's it's As very, far as the release, though. Yes. As far as the release, you know, it's a pretty uh, solid package. you got the Blu-ray, DVD, ultraviolet copy all together. Mm -hmm. um, the special features are sort of interesting, but they don't have some of the basic staples like a commentary track, which uh, I think would be very interesting. At the very least, the directors. Three directors, yeah. 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 How hard. Very interesting. <laughs> um, but they have special features like, you know, they have a, a, film, a feature out about the impossible adaptation because it was deemed, you know, such yes. a complicated yes. film to try unfilmable. and adapt. Unfilmable. Yeah. It's one of those unfilmable um, so, books. So they have one about that. They have a, one about eternal uh, recurrence, love, life. And longing in Cloud Atlas, which is sort of, you know, the themes that recur yeah. throughout all the times and the overlap. Very and parallel, of, yeah, yeah, the paralleling of the and characters. Sort of, you know, things influence future storylines and stuff like that. Butterfly and hurricane kind of thing. Exactly. But yeah, through yeah. time. Yes, yeah, which I'm sure is true as well. Uh, and you have, you know, everything is connected, another featurette. Uh, Naturally. Spaceships, slaves, and sextets, you know, oh. all the sort of different, <laughs> all the, you know, alliteration, awesome. Yes, yeah. but, you know, the various the different things, you know, there was, yeah, you know, it goes all the way back in time to like, uh, I don't know, like the 1400s or yeah, something, something like and then that. it goes into the future. Mm -hmm. So there's all sorts of things in between. You know, it's just a lot of little featurettes about it, the es essentials of acting, which I think would be interesting given that each person essentially played six something, uh, yeah. different yeah, characters. Yeah, at least. The main cast, you know, being like Holly Berry, uh, Tom, Tom Hanks, Hanks, stuff like Hugo Jim Weaving. Sturgis, yeah. Hugo Weaving, Jim Broadbent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kind of an interesting film, mediocre release. Yes. But, you know, if you're a fan of the movie, which I'm sure there is a very Definitely. ardent... There are some people who thought it was the best film of the year. Hmm. I was not one of them. I enjoyed it just fine, though. But uh, if you're a big fan of it, I definitely recommend it. Or if you haven't seen it at all, you know, it might. It might I'm be interested to in check it some. out. I mean, I in, it have enjoyed some of the things that those directors have done. Yeah. And uh, yeah. No. Maybe it'll be some, a, not so much. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. That's why, that, that's why I said some. That's why I said some of the work. Revolution. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But Speed Racer. Yeah. Well, basically everything after the Matrix. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah, oh, yeah. But, you know, the funny thing about that is is that arguably is the best release of the week. It's probably I mean, one of the, really the only major film release Well, it's of not the only a major week. film, but just, like, in terms of packaging, like, yeah. there's actually something to it. Like, yeah. for instance, the next one we're going to talk about, Third Rock from the Sun, the complete series. Yeah. You know, it's a fine show. Yeah. Like it all well and good, but yeah. like the box set of it is A, it's only on DVD because this is back when, you know, everything was in full frame. So yep. it's sort of like, what's the point of putting on Blu ray? Exactly. But also, like, you know, the stuff it, that's on it is very blase. Like, um, most of it was done way after the series was over. Mm -hmm. You know, they were always some like 2004, 2005, yeah. and such, yeah. et cetera. So at that point, you know, a lot of these people are way beyond the sort. So 
like for audio commentaries and stuff, it's some of the crew people and like French Stewart. Like you're not getting Joseph Gordon Levitt, you're yeah. not getting John Lithgow. Yeah. And in terms of stuff that you are, you're getting a few interviews with John Lithgow and stuff like that. But hmm. you know, for the most part, it's like best of moments, blooper reels, episode previews, and then the other big selling point is the alternate final episode ending. Like that's the other big one. So there's like very mundane stuff yeah. for the most part. Like yeah. I would love, like I would like, love that's the kind to of hear. stuff TV Land would have or totally. Nickelodeon at night yeah, would like have, a like a pop up video or yeah, something exactly. like that. I mean, you know, I, I would have loved to hear like John Lithgow and Joseph Gordon Levitt reminisce. I mean, you know, French Stewart. Like I feel like you could get him any time to do yeah. this sort of stuff. So why don't you do like every episode commentary with him exactly. or something like that? So I, I mean, I, and that I, was such a great John Lithgow role too. There, John, I mean, all John of them Lithgow. Were great. The this whole, is like a John Lithgow week. The whole the whole cast was great. I mean, you had like was it Kristen Johnson, French Stewart, mm-hmm. just going like those four together were phenomenal. Like yes. they're all great. Two of them obviously have sort of trailed off. Mm-hmm. Two of them have been still immensely successful. Yes. But you know, nevertheless, it's just it's 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 not great. But you get six seasons worth of material though, so that's yeah. something. Yeah, and during that I, during that like five years it was on the air, it six. went under fifteen different time slot changes. Wow. Woo. In fact, that it lasted that long. You think about shows nowadays that like barely get moved at all and that completely kills them it's yeah well, crazy. just think about this you know this is a half hour comedy mm-hmm. total runtime 3148 minutes that's a lot of episode mm-hmm. right there you know it's probably, probably what, 150 20, yeah, it's probably like 23 24 episode seasons. seasons yeah so a lot of them there but you know i i mean i find myself having a lot of trouble wanting to pay for that i mean yeah. i like third rock from the sun but i'm not really invested enough to spend exactly. like a hundred dollars on it yeah not not anymore no. No. Next up, it's, it's actually relatively cheap. Is it? Yeah, that's the yeah. weird thing. There's like that and Roseanne, and there's like the '70s show. They're, they're all just... under fifty dollars for the complete series. So that's yeah. the only. I mean, thing that's, that's a worth. selling point. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're cheap, but you're not getting anything yeah. for it really. Much. The next one though takes the special feature mark and raises that even a higher <laughs> notch, and that is Beware of Mr. Baker. Yes. This is a documentary I actually saw at South by Southwest in 2012. Nice. Jeez. So it's it, it's been out for a while. Okay. And it's um, just now getting released on DVD. Yep. It did a uh, little a limited sort of ish theatrical run. Okay. Uh, it is a documentary about Ginger Baker, the drummer for Cream, who's arguably one of the best drummers in history. I see. A very. Um, temperamental man to say the least and that really you know his drug <laughs> habits his um, i see Ad- his personality personality really <laughs> like in the first uh few minutes of the movie you see him punch a dude the director in the the head well there you go yeah and the direct i mean the whole thing is very interesting the director jay bulger was a guy who was just really fascinated with this guy and essentially created this fictitious rolling stone article there's supposedly writing so that he could come and meet this guy. Perfect. And granted that this guy's life is so crazy. Like, he's living in South Africa, I believe, at this point, with his fourth wife, and, like, he's pretty Classy broke. Guy. Like, Classy guy. It's just, like, the Aged whole... Aged well. <laughs> yeah. The whole thing, like, is, is crazy, but, you know, for the guy's first film, mm-hmm. very impressive. And the interviews they get are incredible. Like, they get, um... What's his name from Cream? Um... I do not know. Uh... Guitarist. Um... I don't know... I'm it's uh, Eric Clapton. Oh, okay. He was in Cream too. Oh. So like you get Eric Clapton interviewed. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you, should, you should be a little bit sorry about that. I mean, this is Eric Clapton. Um, but <laughs> you know, you got really notable interviews like him, like not just him, other major musicians hmm. talking about how influential Ginger Baker really was. And for someone like me, and I won't give you too much shit because I never heard of Ginger Baker before yeah. this movie. But like, it's really well done. Like, it's cool. a very well produced movie. So we I enjoy a good, good documentary. Yeah. So good on for that. But special features, none. I mean, and I granted indie films hard to come up with special features. Yeah. But like an audio commentary. <laughs> like I feel like you got plenty of time. Like you got to be able to sit down. You're yeah. going. To, you're going to screenings all, all over the country. You got to like be you, real. You could come be on. in like the back, just like recording it by yourself or something yeah. like that. So come on. Be real. Come on. Final one of this week. Uh, probably might be the most popular one mm-hmm. actually in some regards, and that is Dexter mm-hmm. seventh season. Uh, very popular series. Yes. This is the penultimate season because mm-hmm. uh, they've just announced that this, the eighth season is going to be the last one, gotcha. which starts uh, June thirtieth, I oh. believe. Yes, per- very very soon. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with the series, Dexter is about a forensic um, blood pathologist. Blood pathologist who is also a serial killer, but he kills serial killers yes. essentially as yes. his sort of side hobby, his dark passenger, mm-hmm. as he will say. 
a million times. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, one of the great episodes or seasons of the show, actually, I had John Lithgow yes. as his sort of nemesis exactly. serial killer. So yep. I think it was like a third, maybe fourth. fourth. Uh, I think it was fourth, fourth. yeah. But, you know, it's, it's a pretty solid show, mm-hmm. I would say. Mm-hmm. You know, Showtime, I, I think. Is what yep, Showtime. Like, yeah. You know, a few seasons have been a little bit subpar. Yes. But when it's on, it's great. Yes. The thing it's not so great on, though, is its release here. And strangely enough, I guess there's an advantage to being a DVD owner because the Blu-ray special features are even more limited than the DVD or Blu-ray ones. (laughs) Yeah. For once, I will be the victor. (laughs) So uh, special features, you get the Ray Donovan pilot for both DVD and Blu-ray. So that's, I guess, something. The first uh, two episodes of the second season of The Borgias for DVD only. Oh, so the shows of other shows, yeah. previews of other yeah. shows. And then there's uh, first two episodes <laughs> of the mind. first season of House of Lies. <laughs> and then the last one is some biographies, and that's DVD only. The only thing the Blu-ray has is the Ray Donovan pilot. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> at all related to Dexter. Come on, Showtime. Showtime's I guess biographies, clearly not but come very... On good at the home market. Like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> you must think your consumers are so desperate if that's, the, like, the Shit or they realize them. that everybody who watches Dexter torrents it. Maybe. But why even bother releasing it then? Like, Desperation? I, I, it's <laughs> like, it is remarkable how lame that releases. Yes, I, it really is I sad. can't believe that that's all they would do. So, <laughs> For a show as popular as it is. It's... Yep. Shame on you, Showtime. Mm-hmm. And I actually like some of your shows, so this just is yet another reason why you should support HBO. Tisk tisk yeah. tisk. Their stuff is even slightly better than that. Not yes. great, still slightly better. It's better. The special features we're talking here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, join us for our <laughs> next episode as we talk Simon Pegg in mm-hmm. honor of Star Trek Into Darkness. Yes. And as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on uh, iTunes, Blip.TV, Miro, Roku. Check in and get glue. Get some stickers. Leave us some stars on iTunes, some thumbs on YouTube. Leave us comments there as well. And, uh, yeah, I guess if they want to comment. If they, they want comment. to. And uh, we'll see you next time. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. Because I've got Space Game and it feels alright.